Say and spell your name for me. Kayshawn, K-S-H-A-W-N, Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N. And you are? What do you mean? In terms of why we're here today. Oh, I'm in support of Josh signing the Pride Proclamation so we can have a Pride celebration in life or we can declare June as Gay Pride Month. Why is this so important to you? Pride is important to me for the general benefit of Pride. Um, like I was stated, like I stated in there, I'm ex-military and I came from a time where there was no inclusion for the military for gay pride. Like if you were gay in the military, you got kicked out of the military because you were gay. It didn't matter how long you signed your contract to serve your country. If you were gay, you got kicked out of the military. It's important because I have to go, we, we have to go elsewhere instead of staying in, I moved to Lafayette 15 years ago. I have to go somewhere else to be with a group of friends that I love dearly in order to be able to celebrate break pride instead of my own city. And I don't think that's right. That's, that's craziness to me. That's just like me being in Japan, having to fly to China in order to be able to get something done. And that, I, I don't understand that. I think it's important to be able to be inclusive, especially for our youth, because our, we're losing our youth day by day. People are, they're getting beat up for loving who they love, for feeling how they feel. and. I feel like if there was a pride celebration in Lafayette and gay pride was declared for June, we'd have time to be able to wrap our arms around them and try to save them from what they feel like is a sin and from what they feel like is absolute self-hatred. You mentioned your military service. How long did you serve? I did six years in the U.S. Navy. Thank you for your service, first and foremost. When were you in the Navy? What year? Um, I, gra I joined the Navy in February of 2001. And I left in May of 2006. So you were definitely in the middle of the don't ask, don't tell regime. Absolutely, absolutely, don't ask, don't tell. And I mean, and there were a lot of my friends that that I made in the military that we found a bond because we were all gay and we couldn't tell anybody. We had to find our own special spots to go, and we could. It, it, they didn't have the American Military Association like they do right now. It was, if we find out no benefits, no anything. And I mean, I, I definitely appreciate the growth, but we still got a long way to go. In terms of your youth and growing up, because we heard a couple people, I think you may have been one of them, talk about children harming themselves, in some cases commit, uh, attempting uh, suicide because of the rejection they felt from family or society at large. What was your experience growing up in knowing that I don't want to use the word outcast, but really and truly that the LGBTQ community wasn't accepted here or isn't accepted here. Um, to be honest, uh, to offer you a little bit of transparency, my dad beat the life out of me when he found a note that a girl had written to me because that was going to be my first girlfriend. And I was, she, she was so welcoming to me and everything and whatever. But when he found this note, he beat the shit out of me. Like... I don't I don't even know if I can say that but he he I guess you would say he whooped me because I might have been gay at that point at that point I was like 16 years old so I was still trying to figure out what I was doing and who I was and how to be who I was so I can only imagine what kids are getting now like these they're being kicked out of their houses with nowhere to go they're so then that's when we come into the sex work and then that's when we come into all the different situations that could have been solved if we were just able to make it inclusive like I don't want it to be for them what it was for me you, you mentioned the abuse was there any other the hardship from the, between the, your childhood to the time you joined the military I mean it's it was I mean it was high school so and I mean it was that particular time when people didn't understand what gay and lesbian was and so on and so forth so it wasn't like not to say like I was like he did it on a regular basis I had to deny myself basically for him like to just kind of back off of it and honestly I don't have a relationship with him now and I think that's the reason but no kid ever deserves that like at the end of the day most people the most well-rounded people come from parents who care about everything that they have going on who care about who they love who care about what they love who care about what they like to do who just generally 100 percent absolute that that is un full support is unconditional love and i don't see it any other way you mentioned the full support and unconditional love are there any family members or relatives of anyone who's part of the lgbt community listening to this right now what do you want them to know? 
just love them. That's all that they're looking for. They're looking for the unconditional love that they don't necessarily feel from themselves. They already feel strange in their own skin and they don't want to feel that. And it starts at home. I didn't want to feel strange in my skin, but I was. There was nobody like me. I'm, there was nobody like me. I may have had a cousin down the line or like two cousins down the line or whatever, but there was nobody like me. There was nobody that I could look up to and everything. Like there was no, I couldn't call my mom and say, hey, yeah, so I'm gay and I love this girl and to just get a good response from her, it wasn't that type of situation. It was, you're too young to know what you want. And I don't believe in all this and my family's rather religious. So it, it came to be a religious type of situation and everything. And I always try to make a point to say, well, that's not right. That's almost like choosing the color of your skin. And I didn't do that either. So to anybody who can make the difference, please just make the difference. I, I want to see these kids grow up. I want to see them conquer the world and be the people that you want them to be, but in their own right. You mentioned not choosing the color of your skin, and that brings me to something I didn't even think about, not just being gay and laughing, but being black. Gay oh, gay. wow. Like, I've, I've got, like, it, it's so crazy to say, to actually hear myself say it out loud, because I say it to myself often. I'm black, I'm gay, and I'm a woman, which means that I have all the stigmas coming against me. I'm going to get paid less because I'm a woman. I'm going to get paid less because I'm black. And I'm going to get less respect because I'm gay. And I'm sorry, but I work entirely too hard for everything. I serve my country and finish my contract. I put my life on the line for everybody to be able to just live and have these opinions that they have. It's, we don't, we, we just, it's in, inclusive. That's all I'm looking for is inclusion. That's all we're looking for is inclusion. These kids are looking for inclusion. That's what pride is. Pride is inclusion and being as free as you possibly can. Josh Guillory may or may not be listening right now. Fair enough. What do you want him to know? If he is listening to this interview, he's listening to the story as it runs on KPEL, what do you want Josh Guillory to know? I want you to know that we're regular people just like you are. We wake up in the morning, we put our clothes on one leg at a time just like you. No one man is greater than the other one. You sat and said that yourself just a few minutes ago. No sin is greater than the other one. God loves each and every one of us, but God loves us the same. God doesn't love us differently. The same life he gave you, he gave to us. And he told us that we had to live it the way he wanted us to live it, not the way that other people wanted us to live it. So if you're going to live it the way God wants to, God wants anybody to live it, be fair. You have to be open. You have to be open. God wants all of us to just base ourselves on love and be a blessing to the next person. That's what we're really here for, to make sure that the world thrives by us being blessings to each other. So be a blessing. That's, that's all I want him, I, I, that's what I want him to do. Be a blessing to the gay community. Bless us with this proclamation of pride. Bless us with that. And watch the abundance of blessings that he's gonna receive after that. It's just that simple. Anything else you want to add? We've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything else that we may have missed that you want to throw in? Um, no, no. I think I think I think we're good. I think we're good. I just hope that you know this go this works in our favor and that we give our kids somewhere to be and something to do and our, even our people. Just we just want it to be fair. I just thought of one last thing. I know y'all are here with P Flag tonight. Uh, if there's anyone who any young kid who's looking for that inclusion or looking for someone to turn to to talk to how can they get in touch with members of P flag or other organizations for gay lesbian transgender queer children in well the area? social media like right now social media you, you know social media is just as is just as Ha it's just as happening as anything else. Um, P Flag has le has a Facebook page. That's how I found them. Um, the the gay club that we have, they have a gay, they have a, a Facebook page. That's how we can find them. Like there's many different places, many different advocates, many different venues or avenues rather, not venues, but avenues that you can utilize in order to be able to get to someone that you can talk to, someone who knows what the story is that you're going to tell before you even tell it. Like, who, who can lull you for a small amount of time and let you know, like, look, I was there. You can get here. 
we just gotta, you know, we gotta fight. We gotta, you know, we gotta do the things we need to do. Um, but I, like I said, I contacted, I, I got with P Flag over via Facebook, um, and I'm sure uh, the the VP of P Flag is, was actually here earlier. She actually was one of the speakers. Um, Matthew is president of P Flag, so yeah. just get in contact with them and just. You could even get in contact with me, to be honest, at this point or whatever. We're, it's all about support and it's all about I- inclusion. It's it's just about us trying to get it together and, and do the Facebook, right. right. Yes, I'm on Facebook. Right. Awesome, Kayshawn. Thank you again for your service. And, not not a and problem. And thanks for taking the time. Not a problem. Thank you so much for the interview.